Well, in April, the industry experienced further and welcome gains across all facility types. The industry average jumped $1.17 over the previous month, and the all other rack facility types leading the charge with an improvement of about $1.20. However, in better news, we can expect further growth in average daily subsidy from July 1, as the department has committed to the funding higher wages in residential aged care across the country. This came as a direct result of the Fair Work Commission's decision on the aged care work value case. Now, the funding uplift will increase the ANAC ADS from $223 by a whopping 17%. That means the July payments will jump to $260 ADS, which is welcome news indeed. Total claiming or AMO assessment jumped over April to just above eight and three quarter percent of total claiming. Now, the specialized homeless facilities had the biggest jump of over four and a half percent during the April period. And with voluntary claiming coming backwards over the same period, this suggests that the AMOs were largely focused on the initial assessments of the new permanent emissions rather than the reclassifications. As a result, the new admission activity brought the age of claims, which are greater than 12 months backwards, by nearly one and a quarter percent. The sector now has less than 50% of claims which are greater than 12 months. Now the AMOs have been highly occupied with primary classifications or new admissions as the industry is gradually approaching 90% occupancy rates. This is positive news and the additional funding expected to come in from July 1 is another welcoming development. It seems as if the operations are returning to their pre-pandemic levels. The occupancy rates saw a surge due to new respite emissions, which went up by 10% in the course of the month. However, the sector's permanent emission performance in April was not as impressive as it was across March, achieving only two-thirds of the permanent emissions. Hopefully, the trend of decreasing length of stays under six months will continue, as it did over the last month, retracting to just over 24.5%. And the profile of a residential admission is a slightly younger 85-year-old consumer. According to the latest data, the total direct care minutes per resident per day increased by 1.24% from March to April, reaching a figure of 171 and 36 minutes. The RN minutes also continued their upward trend with an average of just below 22 minutes worked on a per resident per day basis. The agency minutes decreased by just below three quarters of percent, while the allied health and divisional therapy combined minutes dropped by nearly 18 and a half percent to eight minutes on a resident per day basis. And finally, there was a significant drop in non-care minutes by just over 15%, with hospitality minutes decreasing from 28 to about 24 minutes worked on a resident per day basis. Now, with the budget announcements and the funding of the Fair Work Commission's decision of a wage increase are welcome news for the sector, as it is expected to break an established trend. For the past few years, wages have been increasing faster than revenue entitlements. But with the forward commitments to increase revenue through the ANAC instrument, providers can now align their workforce requirements with the income passed through to the entitlement structure. However, a new challenge arises, which is ensuring that providers do not overspend on their rosters during periods of fluctuation of resident movements and their associated acuity changes.